The AWS Lambda team just released a brand new code editor in the AWS console. And let me tell you, it's a million times better to what we had access to before. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, who uses the code editor in the console these days, but there are some circumstances where it makes sense if you're just putting together something very scrappy or very quick, where you don't need a CDK application or source control or anything like that, or maybe you're just testing something out and wanna verify it works. So in this video, I just wanna briefly show you what this new code editor has to offer and just walk through some of the features. So as you can see, this is the code editor that you have available to you now. This comes as default when you create a new Lambda function or you navigate to an existing Lambda function. And if you ever want to go back to the old experience, you can see here that you're using the new console editor, but you can switch back to the old editor. I imagine that at some point they're just going to disable this and force you to use uh, this new editor in the future. And so as you can see, we, we now have uh, syntax highlighting. So we get code highlighting or color highlighting based on different syntax, which is great to see. On the left-hand side, you have the Explorer. And as you can probably imagine, this looks very similar to VS Code. In fact, I believe it's some kind of VS Code emulator underneath the hood here because there's some references to it, but it looks pretty much exactly the same as VS Code, which is pretty cool to see and very familiar for a lot of us that already use it. And so uh, just taking a look at what we have here, so on the left-hand side, we have the typical Explorer menu. So if you have to create multiple files, you can do it here. Uh, you can also deploy changes right here. So you can click on deploy uh, to get this thing deployed. You don't have to click on save, like they had some save button uh, up here in the past. And now you have the test functionality built in right into the code editor as well. So you can just click on test here and you can create a new test event. Let me just close the screen thing. Uh, you can create a brand new test event here. Sure, this one looks fine. Uh, we can just give this a name, demo. Uh, and then we can invoke this afterwards as well. And we will see the logs here. So pretty cool to see, like you get the logs as if it's some kind of terminal. And in fact, here, if you go to terminal, okay, this feature doesn't work, uh, but you can download the SAM templates or export this application to App Composer as well. Uh, but that's something we'll talk about a little bit later, but you can see the function logs here, you know, like hello from Lambda uh, as we are outputting here. So pretty handy. And you can just close these tabs when you're all done. Uh, you can also see your test events in the bottom here. So we have an unsaved one and then we have some private ones as well. Uh, then they have a search functionality over on the left hand side. They have a run and debug. However, they don't actually let you debug from what I can tell, like you can't add a breakpoint or anything here. You must download the SAM file uh, and the code if you click on this button. So if you click on this, you can see in the top right, we just downloaded this. Uh, so we can set up a local workspace with this code and with this uh, Lambda template. Now, another cool thing is that you can tail your logs and there's now direct integration with CloudWatch Live Tail. Um, which is very, very handy if you're trying to evaluate the traffic of a Lambda function right here in the code editor. So you can click this and then click on start. And if you ever invoke your Lambda or another process is invoking your Lambda, you'll see the log lines just pop up right here. This is an awesome feature. Very glad to see this. Uh, this is going to make your debugging cycles a whole lot faster instead of having to have like multiple tabs open, one with CloudWatch, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this just makes it a whole lot better. Okay, we haven't even gotten to the best parts yet, but uh, there, there's more to come here with this feature. Let's close these. Um, you can see there's now extensions that are available as well. And so we have the Sublime Text Key Map. Uh, you have Emacs, if you're an Emacs person, and you have Vim Mode as well. And I'm a Vim Mode person myself, uh, so I would typically enable this if I were to use this. Not sure if this persists from Lambda to Lambda yet, like on your AWS account. Haven't tried this out, uh, but I would be uh, really happy to see if it was the case. Okay, let's keep on going. You can also have custom extensions. They have the ability to uh, add environment variables, and this provides a hyperlink uh, to the environment variable section. So you can say like what your environment variable is, uh, and you can add it directly here and start referring to it. And then I believe you should be able to see the environment variables as well. Uh, yeah, if you click open this guy, okay, it's, it must maybe needs a refresh. Okay, it automatically updated. So you can see your environment variables right here in the editor too. Uh, in addition, they also have a rich ability to modify the settings of your editor here. Um, I think I had this open somehow, but let's just show you how to get to it. Uh, so manage, and then you can go to uh, settings. And then this is all your typical settings that you would see if you're using VS Code directly uh, on your home machine. 
Now, the cool part about this feature as well is that it now supports Amazon Q. In Amazon Q, there's two parts to it, but what's supported in the editor here is the developer assistant, which is kind of like GitHub Copilot. It makes your life a whole lot faster to create new code and write new features. So let me show you how to use this. Uh, so by default, it's not necessarily enabled, so you won't actually be able to use it until you do something. Uh, so go down here where it says Amazon Q in the bottom left. You want to click on this, and then you want to make sure that this does not say pause right now it's enabled but uh, let me just do this again so right now it's paused if you want to enable it you have to go to resume auto suggestion so you can click on that uh, you can also access the settings as well so i'm going to enable this and now if i start typing at least if this works correctly we can say def download object from underscore s3 and there you go so we have uh, this code here and if you press left or right on your um, your keyboard, you can get different options that you can kind of uh, go through, whichever one is most important for you. Uh, so we're going to click on this and just click on tab. Not sure why the import is here. That's fine. We can just put this up here. But this code looks correct. Of course, it may require a little bit of finessing to make it work for your use case, but this will definitely get you started quickly. And just a shameless little plug, I am working on a Amazon Q course uh, specifically for the developer assistant. So if you're learning if you're looking to learn how to get started with Amazon Q to use it to generate code snippets and just make your life easier from a developer perspective, use the link in the description to sign up for the mailing list and I provide updates for when it's going to be available and also a pre-release schedule as well. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys benefit from having this rich code editor now available directly in the console. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.